Good evening. Welcome to First Apostolic Church, our Friday night devotion. So glad that you're joining us. A uh, few announcements before we get started tonight. First of all, we're looking forward to Sunday, Easter Sunday, as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We celebrate the resurrection every day, but Easter Sunday is a specific day that we highlight to focus just on the resurrection. So we're looking forward to that. I believe God is going to speak with us and move in every one of our homes. Um, also, we want to be thankful and to give the Lord praise for good reports of people who are being healed, getting their strength back. We celebrate uh, two individuals not no longer intubated and that they are recovering. And uh, we are, are just thankful for what God is doing. While we want to continue to pray for those who are in the hospital, those who are intubated and are continuing to struggle, we want the Lord to touch and minister to them. In particular, we, uh, we have a bittersweet moment, the passing of Sister Laura Darby. We love Sister Darby. She is one of the elders of the church, and she has gone on to meet the Lord. Her physical body has given out, and uh, we are, are sad that we have experienced this loss, but we celebrate just a wonderful life, an elder who is ready to meet the Lord. And so let's continue to keep the Darby family in prayer during this time. Uh, as they are no doubt feeling a myriad of emotions, celebrating her life, but missing her at the same time. But this has been, uh, her life is a success in the kingdom of God, and she's gone on to meet the Lord. And so let's, uh, let's celebrate that during this time of, of the resurrection. Uh, don't forget that you can continue to submit your prayer requests at info at facaurora.org. That's our internal prayer request line, info at facaurora.org. Dot org, and go to the prayer wall on our website and pray for requests for those outside of our congregation who are submitting prayers that would like First Apostolic Church to pray for. Uh, continue to give. Be faithful in worshiping the Lord and giving through tithes and offerings. You can do that at the website to the Give Now tab and also through the Breeze app. And so with all of that being said, let's pray. Uh, we'll pray for the needs and we'll pray for our time together. Lord, I thank you for this Friday, and I pray that you would be with every, every individual that is sick at First Apostolic Church, those who are in the hospital. We pray that you would touch and minister to them. We want to see them come home, see them healthy and well, getting the strength. Uh, we pray for those who have already been released, uh, that you would continue to give them strength as they recover, those who are home sick. Lord, uh, we're, we're so thankful for what you've done, but we continue to bring our needs to you and our cares to you and pray for healing and miracles. We will be careful to give you all glory in your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Um, today, I want to talk to you about Bad Friday. Yeah, that's my uh, sort of our, my message for today, Bad Friday. Ironically, uh, historically, our nation and the church is celebrating what we call Good Friday on this day. So I'm, I'm not making a mistake. It's, it's amazing to me that we call the Friday of the crucifixion Good Friday. Crucifixion, when we talk about the, the mocking of Jesus, the scourging of him, the crown of thorns, the flogging. Medical expert Truman Davis, who studied the Roman custom of flogging, concluded that a brutal beating of Jesus as took place uh, with his scourging, his flogging, would have left Jesus on the very edge of, of death himself. In fact, one Roman witness to flogging said this, that the sufferer's veins are laid bare, their muscles and their tendons and their bowels are laid open to exposure. Flogging and crucifixion being nailed to a rugged cross was so painful that a new word was coined to try to describe the pain, and that's excruciating. It is a Latin word that means uh, uh, out of the cross or from the cross. And such a, a horrific thing that we have to invent words to describe it because there really were no words to describe how bad it was. And so to die by crucifixion was one of the lowest depths of disgrace in the ancient world. F.F. F. Bruce talks about this, that it was so degrading that Roman citizens were exempt from the statute. They could not be crucified if they were a Roman citizen. It was typically reserved for slaves and criminals. And so if you glimpse 
this Friday that we are talking about, this very day that we are celebrating, if you glimpse it from the perspective of the ancient world, it was definitely a bad Friday. In fact, let me give you some insight to the ancient world. This is Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning with verse 13. The Bible says, Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have had with one another as you walk? And notice this, and are sad, and are sad. One of whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to him, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. Now, if you were to ask these two men on the road to Emmaus about Friday, they would have said it is a sad Friday. Notice, he said, Jesus said, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? They would have called it a sad Friday. Not a good Friday. It was a bad Friday for them. And the reason why? They were talking about the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, how he was delivered, condemned to death, and how they crucified him. How, how do we call this Friday Good Friday? Well, the only way you can call this a Good Friday is to have a revelation of a Savior who overcame death, hell, and the grave. You see, when they realized that Jesus had overcome death, hell, and the grave, the Bible lets us know that they returned to Jerusalem. No longer sad. They were rejoicing at the resurrection. You see, an execution can only become good because of a resurrection. There are some things that are greater than crucifixion and even death itself that changed the perspectives of our world to where they would look at this day which such a grotesque thing took place and call it a Good Friday. The reason is it might be Friday, but Sunday's coming. Hebrews 12, 2 says, that looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Notice, there was joy that was before him. While he was enduring a bad Friday or a sad Friday, he was looking forward to the joy that was set before him. And then the Bible says, after that, he sat down at the right hand of God. This sitting down at the right hand of the throne of God is a reference to something being finished, something being uh, coming to a conclusion. You see, God was not finished on Friday. Friday was a part of what God was doing. He was enduring the cross. He was despising the shame, but his plan was not finished on Friday. And as we are celebrating or living through, excuse me, maybe some sad and bad times, can I tell you that God is not finished with us, just like he was not finished on that sad Friday, that bad Friday. Notice how Jesus teaches, as, as recorded by John. This is John, the 16th chapter, verse 19. Now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him, and he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me. Most assuredly I say to you that you will weep and lament but the world will rejoice, and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. Here's what Jesus is talking about. He's saying that there are times when we have bad Fridays, sad Fridays, or just any other day of the week. There are times when we weep and we lament and we are sorrowful and we experience anguish. This happens in our life. Yet Jesus specializes in turning bad Fridays and sad Fridays into good Fridays. Why? Because the story is not done. On April 5th of this year, in an interview with Meet the Press, 
United States Surgeon General Jerome Adams warned, the next week is going to be our Pearl Harbor moment. It's going to be our 9-11 moment. It's going to be the hardest moment for many Americans in their entire lives. And we really need to understand that if we want to flatten the earth, uh, flatten the curve, we're not going to flatten the earth, if we want to flatten the curve and get through the other side. Chris Wallace stated that it was fitting in, in this interview uh, that, that, he, that he was having on Palm Sunday. He says it was fitting that at the beginning of Christianity's Holy Week, this is going to be the hardest and saddest week of most American lives, quite frankly. Now, what they were saying is that this week, this week we're in, is going to be one of the most difficult times in American history. They're saying it's equivalent, not equivalent, but they're comparing it to Pearl Harbor and 9-11. Really bad days, bad days in American history. And yet, when we came through Pearl Harbor and when we came through 9-11, we can look back and see some good things because we came through. While we have had bad days here at First Apostolic Church, we've had people intubated and people in the hospital. Uh, I'm so thankful that a few days ago we started having to add a portion to our prayer list, and that was our, our praise and our thanksgiving for what God is doing. Because when there are bad days that we have, we have to remind ourselves that God is not done. Just like that bad, sad Friday when there was a crucifixion that when you would look at it, you would say, there's nothing good about this. We can look back with a different perspective because we see God was not finished. He had not sat down yet. He was still working. Brother Huntley said that uh, when he was referring to the life of Joseph, Joseph continued to be knocked backwards. Whether it was the, the pit, whether it was out of uh, the Potiphar's house into the prison. Eventually, Joseph ended up on the throne in the palace. And he, he showed that many times we are looking forward to success, always going sort of up and to the right, that things just keep getting better, better, and better until we reach the summit of the mountain. But Joseph's was much different, that it seems like he was having setback after setback after setback. But what God was doing was positioning Joseph to sit on the throne. That every bad day that Joseph had, God was not done. He was steering him to a day where he would celebrate what God had been doing, the plan of God. Philippians says this, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Or as Paul said to the Corinthians, Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Uh, we, we know what it's like to experience sting and pain and death. The passing of Sister Laura Darby, there is a sting that, you know, it, it's a bad day. We, we mourn the loss, and yet, yet when we look back at her life, we celebrate because we understand that that is not the end of her life, that to live is Christ, but to die is gain. God was not finished. And so I want to tell you that here in 2020, with some of the bad days that we've had, that God's not done. With some of the sad days that we had, God is not done. And I believe at the end of this year, we're going to look back at 2020, and we're not going to say it was a bad year or a sad year. We're going to say it was a good year because of what God is going to do this year. And this is not mind over matter. This is truth over our thoughts and ideas and perspectives and our emotions. Sometimes ago, in fact, several years ago, I was praying during a time where I felt, quite frankly, overwhelmed uh, by a leadership challenge and role in my life. And I was praying to the Lord, and I kept using that word, feeling overwhelmed. And it was during that time of prayer that the Lord confronted, uh, confronted, maybe I should say carefronted, or comforted me and strengthened me by pointing out that throughout my life and ministry, He had been preparing me for that, that moment. That the experiences leading up were preparing me, getting ready for that moment, that stage. And I, I began to realize that God is always getting us ready for the next stage, the next thing we're going to face in our lives, and that we can make it because God is preparing us. And when it comes to this pandemic, this current crisis, can I tell you, even on bad days, we're going to look back one day and say good things were happening. Why? Because God was continuing to work. God was not done. And we are ready and able to meet and, and go through this crisis and the next one and the next one after that.
So I want to encourage you tonight on what we call Good Friday. The only reason we can call it good is not because of what happened on that day, but that that was just a part of the process of what God was doing to redeem us and to purchase us, that now we can look back and with a different perspective say, it was good. And that's what I believe is going to happen in 2020. Yes, there are going to be sad days. Yes, there are going to be bad days. But we're going to look back and we're going to see a whole lot of good because God was at work. And so let's follow Christ's example. Let's not just focus on the pain and the badness and the sadness of a current day. Let's look forward to the joy that is set before us. For when we're going to return together at First Apostolic Church and worship together and praise God together and be in community together, let's look forward to what God is doing because God is not done. One day, we're going to hear as Sister Darby did, you have fought a good fight, you've finished your course, you've kept the faith. Because in the kingdom of God, success, success is found in him saying, well done, good and faithful servant. You see in Hebrews, the faithful obtained a good testimony, not because they had received the promise, but because they became faithful whether they received the promise in their timing or not. And in our timing or not, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know God is not done. God's plan is not finished. And when it's all said and done, if we have been faithful, he's going to say, well done. And we're going to look back and we're going to say, God was good, even in the bad days. Even in the sad days, God was doing some good things. Thank you for joining us tonight. Be with us on Sunday. Look, uh, tomorrow night, Brother Wilhelm's devotion. And uh, let's just continue to pray that through all that's going on right now, that we would be sensitive to what God is doing and that we would celebrate the good God that we serve. Have a good Friday. God bless you.